Good afternoon from Switzerland. Welcome to our webinar, Getting Started with Bella Vista. My name is Christian Remus. I am the product manager of Bella Vista. And on the opposite side of the table, there's Janessa. She is managing all the technical stuff. And so we are ready to go. I want to explain some basic things about Bella Vista, connections, interfaces, and how to use several circuit types, and also setting up profiles for better and faster ventilation settings and maybe in emergency use. Um, before we start, I want to explain for the ones who are using our webinar or attending the webinar for the first time. Uh, you see on your computer that you could raise your hand and you could talk live with me. And if you prefer a more subtle way of um, make you make us aware, you can also write uh, a question or comment into the, the chat box. Um, you you will be able to answer question all the time, but I think it will be best to answer the question at the end of the webinar. If there's something really urgent or I'm telling you something wrong, um, just make, make you somehow uh, make you somehow aware or make me aware. Okay, um, then I just want to show my agenda. We are talking about the Bella Vista connections and interfaces, then how to work with the start screen, how to use our several breathing circuits, and adjusting parameters in the cockpit, and also setting up the profiles. First, I want to show the inter uh, connections and interfaces on the Bella Vista. And therefore, you see when you have the Bella Vista from the left side, when you're standing in front of the Bella Vista, you have the interfaces like the canvas. The canvas is mainly a service interface. You won't have to use it as long as you're no service technician. And for the um, clinicians or nursing staff, it's also not very useful because it's mainly for service purposes. The second one is more important is, is the nurse call. You can uh, connect um, a remote control which is connected to the alarming system and the nurse call of the ICU, for example. And if the Bella Vista alarms, the nurse call goes off. And this could help if maybe the room where Bella Vista is ventilating is a bit remote, so the people are still aware that Bella Vista is alarming. <clears throat> then we have the two USB inter, um, uh, connectors that you can use them for downloading log files, for uploading, um, for uploading um, software, uh, exporting trending data, and we have the possibility in the near future also to connect the mesh nebulizer from Aerogen directly to the USB port. And then there's also an Ethernet connection, which is not active at the moment. And then we have the info button, which I will show you later in the hands-on part. Then we have the oxygen inlet. You can use the oxygen inlet from zero. That means with an oxygen concentrator to seven bar, that means with very wide range of, uh, of using uh, or letting in oxygen into the ventilator. You have to configure it in the configure system. And then you can choose between low pressure or high pressure inlet. Then we have the external DC inlet. If you want to use on an external power supply Bella Vista, this is the inlet. And here is the air inlet, and also possible to have the HEPA filter, which is a fine particle filter if you're in an environment where, where it's very dusty and uh, not, not essentially clean. You could also put in a HEPA filter on this inlet. On the right side of the Bella Vista, we have here the connector for the CO2 in the mainstream, side and mainstream. It's possible both. The connector is the same. Side stream is mainly used in neonat for neonatal um, <coughs> appliances and mainstream mainly for adult and pediatric. But you could also use the side stream for adult pediatric, but 
the disadvantage is when using size rim, it's not possible to have volumetric CO2 measurement. Then we have the SpO2 or HL7 interface. You can use it for SpO2 measurement, but when you want to connect Bella Vista to a data management system, uh, it's possible to switch over to HL7 output. On the 1000E Bella Vista, there is a third interface where you can directly connect to the data management system and still use the SP2 interface. There we have the second info button I will show you later. Then there's a nebulizer output which is available for adult and pediatric use. It's, it's uh, deactivated in neonatal use. Um, then we have the hardware um, for the auxiliary pressure. The auxiliary pressure can be used for, for, for many uh, occasions, but mainly, and we will have the software in short time, I think in the next few months, that you can also measure the esophageal pressure or this auxiliary pressure inlet. And all the other inlets or connectors are for flow sensor, pressure line, and also the patient circuit. There is a this rubber lid below the patient uh, circuit connector, uh, which has the oxygen cell behind, so you can exchange the oxy oxygen cell there. And then, last but not least, you have the possibility to attach or to yeah, attach, um, assemble uh, integration valve the, or integrated exhalation valve. And if you want to have it in uh, single use, you could also have the your limb adapter, so it's possible to use either of those uh, which suits you best. Um, I get from time to time questions how to disassemble and how to disinfect the uh, uh, exhalation valve, and I prepared a short, short video to show how to disassemble. The yeah, exhalation valve consists of four parts. When you want to disassemble, you need to be aware that, that you bring the two halves in, in alignment, and then you have the water trap, the two chamber halves, and also the, um, <clears throat> the membrane. And you see the when you assemble again, be sure that the membrane fits correctly into the uh, cassette half, then connect the both, both halves together, and at the end, please assemble the water trap also, And because the water trap is a vital part, and you won't pass a circuit test if you, if you forget the water trap to, um, to put into the exhalation valve. Um, you can disinfect it in many ways. You can immerse it. You can use have a cold disinfection. You can autoclave it at 134 degrees. Um, make sure when you autoclave it that the exhalation valve is disassembled and that all parts are dry. And then you can autoclave it from five to 18 minutes auto autoclave autoclave autoclaving time. Sorry. Okay. And we go further to now the ventilator and to um, start with the start screen. We will switch now to the Bella Vista start screen. Okay, that's the screen you'll, you'll see when Bella Vista is um, starting up. We have on the left side um, the last patient, so this is the patient which was ventilated before you shut down the Bella Vista. Then we have the settings for the new patient, and then we have the possibility to set up three profiles, and you can store up to 20 profiles, but uh, on the start screen you can show three profiles, but you can store a lot more. And when you decide to start with a new patient, in the second row, you see the three different patient groups. It's adult, pediatric, and neonatal. And if you want to type in the height, this could be beneficial when you type in the 
ahead if you really want to know or the clinician wants to know uh, how the patient is ventilated via uh, uh, milliliter per kilos and it will show you that the, uh, the, the milliliter per kilos value. You can also extend your settings if you type in the lung injury or the lung condition button and then you can decide either if you want, either if you have an obstructive or restrictive patient. The reason to do it is that the settings will adapt, uh, in this case the pressure control settings, uh, in terms of PEEP, oxygen concentration, and if you don't know what kind of patients you have, you can just keep the no lung injury and just go ahead. Then on the circuit button, you have three different possibilities. When you go, want to ventilate invasive, this is the sign with the tube. And you see also on the, on the top line of the ventilator, also a small tube sign, and this also indicates that the patient now will be ventilated invasive. When you change to non-invasive, you will have the mask sign on the top and also some blue bars in the top and the bottom. And this shows you even from a further distance that the patient now is ventilated in the non-invasively. And if you change to HFOT, which means, which means this is high flow oxygen therapy, you can, after you have read the info button, which tells you that you should only use humidified circuits and also um, that the ventilation alarms are suppressed. If you confirm this, you will switch to the HFOT page. And this show you, shows you green bars. So it's very easy to understand when the patient is in HFOT, it's green. When he's in, um, ventilated in non-invasively, it's blue. And when there are black bars, you're in invasive mode. And then we can go back to invasive. You see also the possibility, this must be activated in the configuration assist, that you can use the automatic tube compensation either for endotracheal tube or for tracheotomy tubes. If you choose them, you get the compensation level, you can choose the diameter of the tube, and you can also decide if you want to have the compensation only inspiratory or or if you want to have the compensation in and expiratory. By default, it's in, in and expiratory. And if you are okay with all those settings, you just can confirm. And on the screen, it shows you that the ATC now is active. <coughs> so uh, below the ATC, there is the um, circuit type. And to be a bit more detailed on the circuit types, we switch back to the presentation and come back to the screen later. As you know, Bella Vista is able to, uh, to be used with several types of circuits. Uh, in, in fact, there are already six which you can use. Maybe you can also count the seven one. Uh, but I will just go through how to use the circuits and what's important when you use this or this, uh, that certain circuit. The first one is the A circuit, which is available only for non-invasive ventilation. And you have to use uh, single M circuits with a leakage port because when you use the A circuit, you don't have an exhalation valve, as you see in the short film below. You just have connected the inspiratory side, and you have connected uh, pressure, um, the pressure interface. And you really need to use, that's all very, very important, a vented mask. And I think the best idea would also to have a leakage port into um, the circuit. And this can only be really used um, for non-invasive ventilation. The second circuit you can use is the so-called C circuit. This is still a single limb, but now you have an exhalation valve. And these circuits can be used invasively and non-invasively. But be aware that this circuit doesn't have an exhalation measurement, and that means it's not suitable for life-sustaining ventilation because we don't have any indications of exhalation data or parameters. That means 
I would recommend also to use this circuit for mainly non-invasive ventilation, but it's possible to use this circuit for, um, for invasive ventilation too, but you will get an info window um, that this circuit needs to be uh, or is not suitable for life sustaining ventilation. You can use a non-vented mask for this type of circuit and there we come to the next circuit which is the D circuit. D circuit is also a single limb circuit with an exhalation valve on the proximal side but also having a flow sensor. So, and when having a flow sensor you will be able to ventilate in any way, life sustaining, invasive, non-invasive, you can use a non-vented mask for non-invasive and you also have to connect the flow sensors to the, to the interfaces on the right side and what I always would recommend as you see in the photos on the connection table to use always a um, filter to just prevent the inspiration wall from fluid intake uh, because after, after the connector there is the inspiration valve and if there are some fluids would come somehow into the ventilator there would be maybe damage and so I would always recommend to have a filter on the inspiratory side. Then we have last but not least the E-circuit which is um, also can be a dual limb circuit, can be a coaxial circuit, can be used with a non-vented mask and of course the flow sensor and it's connected to the expiration valve and connected to the inspiration side. So this is the um, circuit you use, I think, uh, most of you because it, it offers you the most possibilities uh, to ventilate your patient. Then we have for N NIPPV and NCPAP with a MediJet in neonatal mode, we have also the possibility to use a single limb circuit for the MediJet, a dual limb circuit. When you're using a dual limb or an E-circuit for the MediJet, just have in mind to have the dual limb adapter because you can't connect the MediJet right away to the Y piece of a circuit. You need to have this adapter and also the pressure line. So this is very important. I get always uh, questions from time to time regarding this when they want to connect it to a dual limb circuit and you really need this adapter. This can be ordered uh, from our product, product catalog and please be aware when you have presentations or when you want to use the NC part that you really need to have this dual limb adapter. And the last circuit, which is also single limb circuit but with no pressure line, no flow sensors, just the high flow circuit. When you use high flow, you don't have any alarming so because that's the reason you don't have censoring and, and so the high circuit is just a limb which is heated but heating is very crucial for the HFO circuit so but you could use a regular circuit to uh, actively humidified circuit to be precise. So question from my side just to be um, just to know how what type of circuits are you using in your daily use or for presentations or when you use Better Vista? So for circuits A, C, D or E. Okay. Um, you can see here, when, uh, here's an overview that you can use the, oh, there was some there's some mode going on. So most of you are using D and E circuits with the flow sensor and I think this is also the best way. You have the best sensoring, you have the best triggering and the most precise uh, volume control. So that's good to know that most of you are using D and E circuits. Here in this overview you can see when to use for what kind of modes and invasive and non-invasive. And I think this could sometimes be helpful that you really know which kind of modes you can use with which circuits. And then we can proceed to the cockpit and adjusting parameters. Now we have a demo again and Janessa will switch back again to the Bella Vista. 
Okay. Now I start my ventilation after I did all my settings, start the ventilation and I will be directed to the cockpit. So now you have all the all the curves and parameters and you can adjust your settings but when you want to change maybe uh, the peak pressure into the inspiration pressure you can just press the parameter change the value directly and then you can change the inspiration pressure and now we got alarming which is very good I can confirm the alarm I could also press the alarming right away and then I will head to the alarming panel and the alarming panel will show me when my alarms occur currently and then I can silence the alarm and can switch back to the cockpit. <clears throat> I decide not to have the volume because it's not so interesting for me. I would like to increase the flow trigger a bit because then the auto triggering will stop and uh, I would like to have the FIO2 value exchange to for example leakage. So now I set up um, my personal cockpit I would like to have and now I decide to make this also a profile. And I could do this on the fly while the ventilator is doing its job. I can choose the main menu, go into the data assist, and then just save everything I have set now. And then I can give it a name, and I could just call it standard, for example. And I can choose whatever name I want to. And then I go to apply and now the profile is already saved. I can go back to cockpit, <clears throat> finish, finish the ventilation for the patient and when the patient is finished with ventilation I can stop the ventilation. Then go to the panel where I have two pro profiles with the same name and I would like to change this now. Choose configure profile and here you already see that there is the standard mode which I configured one minute ago and now you have standard as new profile. And the profiles are quite comfortable because when you choose a profile everything what you programmed is just set and you can start in ventilation right away. So I start standard, I start the ventilation and you see that everything I adjusted two minutes ago is now ready uh, and also the alarm settings will be the same which I, which I adjusted before. I will stop the ventilation again and so I already did the profile setting and so I gave you a short overview about the connections, about start screen, setting up profiles, and um, the cockpit, and oh, there I am. <laughs> and now I'm ready for your questions. Okay, uh, first question comes from Diego. Um, what kind of height and weight can I adjust and for which patient groups? That's a good question. I, I can show you here in the new patients um, that you can adjust height, but the height and uh, height setting is only available at the moment for adult and pediatric. In neonates, uh, we don't have height or weight setting at the moment. You can adjust up to 2 meter 50 patients and uh, down to 50 centimeters for pediatric. That means 6 kilos to around 140 kilos. So that means that you are able to cover all kinds of patients you, uh, you will have in your daily use. Another question. 
Okay, what's the difference between invasive and non-invasive ventilation on Bella Vista? Um, sometimes it's uh, complicated, but here it's very easy to explain when you uh, when you change between invasive and non-invasive. The main change is that you can deactivate uh, the volume, the tidal volume and the minute volume alarms. That means when you have huge leakages during the ventilation, so won't be, um, you won't get nuisance alarms because of minute volume and tidal volume. And it's not possible to deactivate the alarms in invasive ventilation. And also the deconnection detection is a bit different from the um, from the invasive ventilation, and so that's the main difference. It's not about leakage compensation, it's all about alarming and deconnection detection. And you can also raise your hand if you want to ask directly a question. Um, someone, no, all are. All are happy. Other questions regarding Bella Vista? No? So if everyone's happy, uh, I will thank you very much for your attention. Um, in a few seconds we will upload the slides uh, as a PDF so you can download it. You will get some question after this webinar. Maybe you also can make suggestions for, for topics for the next webinars. And I wish you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and hope to see you next year again for the next webinars. Thank you.